What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on Psalm 114, or day 114, Psalm 114, for the second time. Hallelujah. When Israel went forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob, which is Israel, from a people of a strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. And that's the two parts of Israel, Judah and Israel. And Judah his sanctuary, we know that um, Judah is who the northern house of Israel was scattered into the nations by the Assyrians. But the southern house of Judah was taken into the uh, Babylonian captivity and brought back into the land. And that's who was in the land when uh, Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. Uh, God's sanctuary. That's, that's where the temple was. They had the temple and everything. Judah, his sanctuary, Judah became his sanctuary. Israel, his dominion. Or his rule. His... Uh, let me see. I have... I think I have it pulled up. Let me look up the inner linear real quick. One second. His dominion is the Hebrew word memshala, which means rule, dominion, or realm. And we know Ephraim is the firstborn. The Bible says, God says, Ephraim is my firstborn. And that means, what that means is uh, speaking about the believers, Christians. His firstborn, because that's who's going to be first birthed into the new kingdom. Because most of the Jews still don't believe. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. And that's speaking about the Red Sea. When they crossed over the Red Sea after they came out of Egypt and... We know the Egyptians tried to follow him into the Red Sea, and uh, God brought the sea back back over them after the Israelites passed through. The Egyptians tried to follow him in, and God took out the whole Egyptian army by bringing the sea back over them. And the Jordan, the sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back. And that's speaking about when um, Joshua took the people across the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was, uh, the water stopped. So there was dry ground. There was clear ground to cross over. The whole Israelite camp. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams. The hills like lambs. And, uh... That's going to happen in the end. We'll, we know the, the mountain shook at Mount Sinai. When God came down on the mountain, the mountain shook. But uh, this is also going to happen in the end with the, uh, with the six seal earthquake. Everything's going to be shaking, um, jumping. <laughs> the mountains are going to be jumping. Like the whole world is going to be devastated by this earthquake we read here in Isaiah 24 starting in verse 19 the earth is broken asunder the earth is split through the earth is shaken violently the earth reels to and fro like a drunkard and it totters like a shack for its transgression is heavy upon it and it will fall never to rise again I mean it's we're talking about if you ever seen a movie 2012, just think about that earthquake. But maybe maybe even worse than that. But that earthquake was uh, along the lines. Um, the Bible says every in Ezekiel 38, every wall will fall to the ground when he makes himself known. That's when Jesus comes on the clouds and the earthquake happens and everything. What ills you, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, 
that you turn back? O mountains that you skip like rams? O hills like lambs? Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, before the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. And that's speaking of the rock at Horeb, the split rock. When Moses struck the rock and water came out, the, the rock split, split down the middle and water came out. And this is actually a huge rock. Basically, a, a person would only stand about this, this high right here. It's a massive rock that was split in two. And it even shows signs of a... Uh, Like there's evidence of water erosion flowing out of the rock. There's literally water erosion um, from the water that flo flowed out of the rock. And that's just one of the few things uh, as far as evidence of the Bible. And um, also the bottom of the Red Sea. Uh, there's chariot wheels. There's horse horses hooves and stuff at the bottom of the Red Sea. And if you found the place in the Jordan uh, where they crossed over, you would find those 12 stones that were set up in the middle of the Jordan. It would be interesting to see that. But uh, he's coming again. And listen to what he says. Tremble, O earth, before the Lord. We need to fear God. We need to fear what's coming upon this world. But if we're his servants, if we're right with him, we need to look forward to our salvation. But even then, God is going to judge his people as we've been seeing throughout the book of Hosea and even Micah. Judgment begins in the house of God. God is going to judge us and chastise us. But after that, we receive the kingdom, and God is so gracious. God, we don't we don't deserve anything. We don't deserve anything from God. But we need to fear Him. We need to respect Him and reverence Him. Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, before the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. We need to trust in Him. Because no matter what we go through in this life, we know that we serve the God, the only God, but God who split the Red Sea, allowed them to pass through the midst of the sea with water piled up on each side, who cut off the waters of a river so they could pass through, who brought water out of a rock for them to drink, who rained down manna from heaven for them to eat, and the quails for them to eat. Our God provides Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Our God provides. And He gives us so much. We don't deserve any of it. But He gives us so much and He's done so much for us. Praise Yeshua. For His sacrifice that He made for us. We don't deserve that. We don't. We don't deserve anything from God. But He loves us and He's gracious. He's our Father. And just praise God. Hallelujah. Let's stay on a straight and narrow path. Let's make sure we're right with Him. Let's stay focused on Him. It's easy to get distracted in this uh, crazy world. So many, the enemy's fighting against us hard in so many ways. And it's easy to get off track and get distracted. But we need to stay focused. Stay walking on the straight and narrow path. We need to be right and ready with Him. Right with Him and ready. Let's spread the gospel. Let's show His love in everything we do. Let's shine His light to the world. He is the light of the world. But we are also His body. We're supposed to be a light. And we shine His light by showing His love. By spreading the gospel. By keeping His commandments. And once people see 
that we're different and we're set apart, we're walking on the walking in the right way, that light is shining. Let's warn the people that come in judgment. Let's tell people about salvation to our God, salvation to our King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, call out to Him today. We're living in the last days. The Bible tells us what's going to happen right before the return of Yeshua, right before the return of Jesus, right before the tribulation time and the wrath of God, the worst period of time in the history of the world. And it's happening. It's happening. We're living in these days. And uh, once it officially... Once you start to realize, like once 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 it officially happens, once the 144,000 are caught up, once there's a, the initial rapture and stuff starts getting crazy, you only have a couple days until it's all over. And at least in this country, only a couple days until that earthquake happens. A couple days till 100 pound hailstones rain down on the earth. And coals of fire. It's, it's, what's coming upon this world is so bad. And I don't wish I, even on my worst enemies. But it's going to happen. It's the wrath of God. It's his judgment upon a wicked world. But you can be saved. And it's not even about being saved from death in this life. It's about being saved from the second death. Because after this life there is judgment. Everyone's going to stand before God in judgment. More, stand before Jesus more, more specifically. The sun. And um, if you haven't had your sins forgiven, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. But God offers us life. And He requires perfection in order to live eternally, in order to enter His kingdom. So we can't earn it on our own. We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. And that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He took on the punishment for us. He lived the perfect life. Did nothing wrong and took on the punishment for us. Made the sacrifice for us so that through faith in him and what he did on the cross, we receive his perfection. We have our sins forgiven and receive his perfection through faith. We receive his righteousness through faith. And that's the only way to be saved. It's the only way to be made right with God. It's the only way to receive that perfection because... We can't wipe away our own sins. We can't take away what we've done before. But Jesus can. He can take that away for, for us. Take that away from us. All we got to do is call upon him. Call out to him, him to save us. Call out to him to forgive us of our sins. And he will. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. He'll change you overnight from the inside out. You won't be the same. You won't want to be the same. And you won't care what anybody else thinks. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's the end of Psalm 114. Love y'all. Shalom.